Hey, it's Saturday, and it's time for the Fun Astrology and Merriman Market Analyst podcast, taking a look at the financial free weekly newsletter written by financial astrologer and market analyst for over 50 years, Ray Merriman. Thank you for joining us. I'm Thomas Miller. This is being recorded on March 23rd and is written for the week of March 25th. You can find the free newsletter at MMACycles.com. First article is from Friday, March 22nd from CNBC.com. It says the Dow Jones Industrial Average slipped on Friday, but clinched its best week of the year after back-to-back record-setting sessions. One reason for the market optimism stems from this week's Federal Reserve meeting. The central bank left rates unchanged, and commentary from Fed Chair Jerome Powell reinforced that cuts are coming, despite a recent bout of hot inflation readings that led some investors to fear a postponed easing timeline. And then this quote from last week's column right here at MMACycles.com, the article for March 18th from Ray. He said, That does not mean that the Jupiter-Uranus Express, headed to its major destination on April 20th and 21st, has been derailed. It just means there is a pause, as Venus will first conjoin Saturn on March 21st, followed by a powerful solar eclipse, and then Mars conjoining Saturn, all of that April 8th through 10th. It may get a bit rocky short term, but the magnetic pull of Jupiter and Uranus is still poised to outweigh other cosmic forces. End quote. And now this week's commentary. Ray says the pause in global stock markets ended last week as many indices shot up to new highs. The rallies were especially strong on Wednesday and Thursday after the Fed announced it would not cut rates just yet, as expected, while the Bank of England actually did lower rates, and the European Central Bank stated it would soon follow. On that news, several European and U.S. stock markets shot up to new all-time highs. However, on Friday, equities sold off sharply in the U.S., but they still ended the week higher. This confirms our thoughts that stock markets would pause, then become a bit ragged and choppy, but would continue their advance to new highs associated with the forthcoming Jupiter-Uranus conjunction April 20th or 21st, depending on where you live. Stocks were not the only beneficiary of the central bank's dovish tone last week. Gold soared to a new all-time high late Wednesday at $2,223 an ounce. However, by Friday it had fallen back to a low of $2,158. Silver also rallied to the Fed's announcement to a high of $25.97 early Thursday, but by Friday had fallen to $2,458. Bitcoin and Ethereum had sharp sell-offs last week. From its all-time high of 73,803 on March 13th, Bitcoin dropped all the way back to 60,760 a week later for a loss of 17.6%. Ethereum had a multi-year high of $4,093 on March 13th, followed by a sell-off to $3,058 a week later. That was a loss of over 25%. As subscribers know, we're looking for a decline of 20 to 50 percent for the 16-month cycle trough in Bitcoin. The criterion is being fulfilled in Ethereum already after only one week. Crude oil made a new four-month high last Tuesday, rallying to $83.12 a barrel before pulling back modestly as it remains above $80. Given that Jupiter is co-ruler of crude oil, it could still break out into April 20th and 21st when Jupiter conjoins Uranus, the king of breakouts. And now this week's short-term geocosmics, an article from the Wall Street Journal on Thursday about home sales. Home sales rose in February from the prior month, marking the first time in more than two years that sales increased for two consecutive months. Sales of existing homes, which are the majority of purchases, surged 9.5% to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 4.38 million, according to the National Association of Realtors, out on Thursday. Economists surveyed by the Wall Street Journal had estimated sales of previously owned homes to fall by 1.3% in February. And then this from Friday's Wall Street Journal. 
interest rate cuts are likely to come down later this year with the Federal Reserve on track to start cutting rates, but mortgage rates might not follow as quickly. In short, prospective home buyers might get a little help from the Fed later this year, but not that much. And then a blast from the past. From 1969, Keith Richards and Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones. You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. Ray says, we now leave the gentle season of Pisces and start a new cycle, beginning with Aries in the spring, the vernal equinox of March 19th and 20th, depending on where you live. It's like going from a cozy, pleasant slumber to the rude awakening of an overly loud alarm clock. Get up! Pay attention! The house is on fire! The first month of spring, Aries, might be a little more dramatic than usual this year because it contains both a lunar and solar eclipse on March 25th and April 8th, respectively. Not only that, but the solar eclipse in Aries will also be conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer. This means there is a danger of harm, especially in war games, Aries territory. Once again, and right on cue, Russian President Vladimir Putin issued another dire warning to the world. Not only did he reiterate another threat of possible nuclear weapons if NATO troops enter Ukraine, but he also announced 100,000 more troops would be sent to Kiev for a new offensive this summer, according to Reuters. This is not just April's solar eclipse in Aries conjoining Chiron, but it reflects the even greater matter of the Aries vortex, which is coming up in 2025 and 26, as covered in recent MMA webinars and in the 2024 forecast audiobook. In terms of financial markets, my observation is that solar eclipses tend to be often more positive than negative for stocks. However, they do not usually correspond to the culmination of primary cycles, lows or highs. They can reflect sharp gains and losses right before or after the eclipse. With the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction two weeks later, my view remains that stocks can still go higher and may even continue into May through June due to additional favorable Jupiter aspects arising then. Yet, as previously mentioned, markets can get ragged here. Mercury will turn retrograde from April 1st through 25th. The trickster can cause sharp price movements up and down in short spans of time, usually in the first 10 to 12 retrograde days. During the Mercury retrograde period, we will have the solar eclipse, which can also coincide with sharp price swings, followed by Mars conjoining Saturn on April 10th. Combinations like this can also propel sharp price swings or reversals in foods, watch the grains, orange juice, and cocoa, and by association also, live cattle and meats. These are not likely easy markets to navigate, but until proven otherwise, keep the focus on the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction of April 20th and 21st as a marker for trends to continue in markets. Key words to remember during this particular Aries season are danger and aggression. Key behaviors to exhibit for best results are caution and avoidance of risk. It's fine to start new initiatives as long as one is fully aware of the consequences. In other words, backup plans will be important when things don't immediately go quite the way one wants, as in Mars conjoining Saturn, equaling frustration and delays. But efforts can still be successful for those who are both patient and farsighted. And note that this may be a bully's session. Avoid the bully. There is nothing to gain by being a bully or giving in to a bully. There is much to gain, however, by being self-motivated and independent, not dependent on others who may frustrate and cause upset. It is useful to work hard on projects deemed as personally important, even if you have to work on them alone. In fact, it may be better to work alone than with others who fall behind on their commitments, especially during the week of April 10th. Mark it down, but don't set your alarm clock to it.
What a great synopsis of exactly where we are right now. And all of this is covered in, oh, so much more detail in the 2024 forecast book from Ray Merriman, outlining the entire year. And there's a whole lot more than this. It's still available on audiobook. If you just go to hightimelinebooks.com, you'll see a direct link there that will take you to mmacycles.com where you can buy the book. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great weekend. See you for Level Up on Sunday night. Back again on Monday for a full week of podcasts on fun astrology. Have a great weekend, everybody.